Welcome to the big British castle. It's time for Adam and Joe to broadcast on the radio. There'll be some music and some random talking in between. And then eventually the whole thing will just end. That's the Foo Fighters with times like these. Hello, this is Adam. Hey, this is Joe. Uh, happy morning. Thanks very much, man. That's all right. Really appreciate that. That's a nice morning as well. It's lovely. And we've had an email from David in Salford saying, uh, morning, hope you're well. Unfortunately, it's not all good here. Oh, dear. Uh, he's mismanaged his Saturday morning already. It's not even nine o'clock. His plan was to wake up, have a cup of tea, an English muffin, go into the shower, and be ready for the start of the show. He tripped, fell downstairs, and he's dead. He's died. I don't think it's that bad. Oh, good. Things have gone wrong. Can you kindly ensure that the start of your show is a bit rubbish, therefore <laughs> negating my need for a rust shower? That's all right. We can do that, can't yeah, we? Yeah, you know what? I think we should go for the whole show. <laughs> you reckon? Yeah. That's bold. Can we do that? Well, we've never, we've never done that before. I mean, we've never set uh, a ta an achievement target quite so high. In what kind of way? How would we be rubbish? Just specific uh, areas. We would falter. We're going to falter. I'm going to say, uh, and you know, right. more than I've ever said before. And usually I say, uh, 200 times a show. Yeah. And you know, about 20 times a link. All right. Well, I'm going to say, all right. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. Mm. And, um, and we're going to really? get the, the names of songs mixed up with the artist. Okay. We're going to call the song the name of the artist. You're going to do that too. I usually do that. That's my job. Well, I, I think we should both do it. Oh, you want to do it? Uh, and then we should, a couple of links, we should just have nothing to say. Okay. And just talk. That's, no, that's just normal. Talk. That is that's normal. normal. That is more or less normal. Mm. Also, facts, we should get a lot of facts yeah, wrong. Make lots of mistakes. Make loads of mistakes. Like, I was listening on my way into Radio 2. Who was it on Radio 2 in the morning who does the 60s music show? You know, it's the guy. Maybe it's Ken Bruce? Um, anyway, he was talking about, uh, so he's, you know, we started as we mean to go on. He was talking about a guy who'd sung some song that he was playing and he said, sorry, I don't have more facts for you about the artist. And I thought, that's a disgrace, Ken Bruce or whoever you are. How come, you know, this is the BBC. Could you not have got a research and just to find out a few facts about the song? Was that so hard? But, and then you realized, then you realized that I was, um, yeah, like, like we it. never have any facts none. about anything. None, For instance, none facts. Uh, here's the Wombats with back, or is it? Here's backfire at the disco with the Wombats. That was the Wombats with backfire at the disco. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. I've got some facts about the next record. Have you? We were just discussing that we never have any facts, uh, or uh, and we often lack um, competence when it <laughs> comes to presenting radio. So we're going to try and make make up for that. Yeah. Is that what we were going to try and do? We were I thought, no, I thought we were going to go the other way. Worse. Yeah, I thought we were going to dig oh, ourselves in deeper. You see, I deeper. can't even do that properly. You're a disgrace. You can't even be bad properly, because the next record's by Sufjan Stevens. Is that how you say his name? Sufjan? Sufjan. 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 Um, and he has a thing called the 50 States Project. Do you know about that? He, he's, is he not, is he still, is it ongoing? Is he giving he's up? He's giving it up. But you know? Yeah, he's going to write an album about every single state mm -hmm. in the US of A. I said, you know. That's all right, man. That's all right. If it wasn't for you know, the whole big British castle would crumble. How many albums has he done? Uh, About five or six something of like varying that. different forms. Yeah. He's and he's only managed to do two states. Has right. he? Yeah. He's Which one's done he done? Michigan. Mm -hmm. And then he's done Illinois. Strange states to start with. But uh, the Illinois album is amazingly good. Have you yeah. got that one? Uh, I've got it tucked away somewhere. It's one of those ones I went out and bought because I felt I ought to and never properly applied well, it's myself. It's amazingly good. Yeah. And here's a song from it. Uh, they've all got amazing titles, the songs of the albums. This has got a particularly good one. It's called Decatur. De what? Take Decatur. Are you saying take a tour in a funny De voice? Decatur. Do you think I don't know that? Oh, sorry. Do you think that, do you think that wasn't a joke? <laughs> right, it's called what you just said, and comma, or round of applause for your stepmother. Yeah. Yeah? Here it is. So for Juan. Hey. Very well done. Very well done. And there's the round of applause for uh, the stepmother of Decatur. What is Decatur then? Is it a place in America? Whereabouts? In Illinois. In Illinois. It's all connecting up somehow. <laughs> He's all thought it through. What's it like just to go through your life thinking things through? Uh, it must be tiring. That was, uh, Sufjan Stevens. Uh, that was a free play, and I do recommend that album. It's, it's a bit of a, it's been around for a few years, uh -huh. 
but you should go and get it and you should go and get it out of under your dusty box out of my locker out of your my dusty dirty locker. dirty locker uh speaking of dirty song wars this week uh has an erotic theme mm. now this is dangerous territory for a family morning show to go into not really for me really yeah. <laughs> what's that supposed to mean i just went into a totally pathetic area <laughs> a really silly innuendo laden i think that sounds good because because my song is frankly more alarming than sexy <laughs> did you did you I think it's quite frightening you applied yourself to the whole sexy remit uh, did you? I, w I went into a uh, medical direction <laughs> a uh, sort of sexy doctor kind what, of gynecological no 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 <laughs> yes that means no. isn't it no <laughs> no it's very it's very uh clean but you know quite uh just slightly menacing right <laughs> <laughs> and that's that not mean? something you want to it's not a feeling you want in the bedroom area not really unless you're uh into that kind of thing <laughs> which i'm not it's terrible business <laughs> um so that's coming up later something to look Some forward wars. to that's after the news that's coming up and of course we have text the nation in the show well, look, we're still trailing what's coming up and we're about 20 minutes in we can make the trailing what's coming up last say uh for 55 minutes Pro probably then do five minutes of actual program you know i then like do it the um, last half hour just looking back at that five minutes easily that's the way that all tv's constructed these days it's you know? true isn't it a 15 minute recap uh five minutes of actual fiber mm. and then 20 minutes of what's coming up next week i like it when you're watching a show like lost or whatever mm. and you've been watching it for about 15 minutes you're still getting opening credits yeah. you know there's already been one or two commercial breaks and <laughs> you're still into the opening uh credit section yeah, that was one of the jokes in our film we were going to make yeah we're yeah. never going to make that in the oh, middle of the film the, credit, the credits would just start again it's yeah, good i like it because it makes you feel as if like oh, this is brilliant i'm having so much fun and it's only just started it gives it momentum yeah and then it ends <laughs> uh like our show anyway more music now uh it's trail time what am i talking about and it just says trail homes oh this is for john this homes, is the isn't? music of trails that's uh the last soul I said that uh, in a in a sort of unpleasant way. I didn't mean to. De La Soul, of the soul, no medallions. No go. go. No go. No hanging out with Paz, hanging out with me. Buddy, 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 buddy all, all up in your face. face. I think that's, that's a bit good. rude. That should... last lyric. Is it? Yeah, but that's the theme of uh, this morning's song. Is it really song. rude? I never realised that. Yeah, well, what's buddy? Oh, now you're talking. Yeah, no, that I am puts talking. a whole different complexion buddy, on it. Buddy, 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 all up in your face. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Nice. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Now, I went for a date with a girl this week, Adam. Well, you've got one already. Uh, yeah, but I've got another one now. Have um, you? I can't Scarlett remember Johansson. her name. I can't remember her name, but we went, uh, she wanted to go to the boardwalk mm -hmm. and, uh, go bowling. Did she? So, so we went to the, well, we went to the board, she wanted to go on the Ferris wheel, but it was late at night and the boardwalk <laughs> was closed. Yeah. So we went to the beach. And we swam in the sea. I just jumped in fully clothed with my hat and sunglasses on. She followed. Did she? Didn't say anything, just jumped in, swam around with me. Uh, then we got out of the sea. We went to the bowling alley and uh, did some bowling. I, I bowled two or three <laughs> balls, but then I got really bored. Uh, and uh, I thought, this is boring. And so I jumped over the concession stand counter to where they make the hot dogs and just started running around and, and, and pushing things. And I jumped out again and, and she followed, she kept following me. She didn't say anything. She was chatting about us all the time. She didn't seem to notice what I was doing. She just carried on chatting. Then we came out of the <laughs> bowling alley and we jumped into a miniature golf course. And uh, I jumped in this pond, this pool, right up to my waist, fully clothed again. She jumped in as well. And we just stood there in silence, <laughs> yeah. staring at each other. I've done that. Uh, and then I drove her home and I hit, I ran down several pedestrians. I think I hurt them really badly on the way back. And uh, I put, when I parked at her house, I just I just parked diagonally right across her lawn and smashed the front of my car into her house. Mm. But she didn't seem to notice, and she got out of the car and said um, that she'd love to see me again. That's good, good. Yeah, I'm of course talking about the new video game Grand Theft Auto uh. 4. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise that. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant, thinking, brilliant. What is he on about? I was thinking it's a commercial that he's seen, but I was thinking, what commercial is this? No, it's, it's, it's video games. All the kids are into games. them, and this is the, obviously uh, a big pop cultural event. Yeah. Grand Theft Auto 4. It's going to make more money than any film does in its opening weekend. And they've mapped out every square inch of New York. You can go into oh, any not door you want. Is it not? No, New York is working very hard to distance itself from the world of Grand Theft Auto. It's oh. a place called Liberty City. Liberty.
liberties. That's modelled vaguely on New York, right. but it's nothing to do with the real New York because, of course, uh, New York is one of the safest places in the world, safer than London. The taxis uh, are, are spherical. They have the word taxi spelled out in balloons. In New York? Yeah. Do they? We established <laughs> that last week. About now? <laughs> do you not this remember another that? video game? This is last week. It's we so talked confusing. About uh, <laughs> what? I completely thrown me off my tracks now. <laughs> I've thrown you off your tracks <laughs> after your anyway, nonsensical ramble. Anyway, I haven't played much of uh, Grand Theft Auto 4. My nonsensical uh, ram rambo ramble will make a lot of sense to uh, every Rambola. everyone who's played the game, mm. which will be lots of frustrated young men yeah. uh, who are sitting in their front rooms t enjoying killing people right. and behaving in a naughty way mm. in a virtual environment. But it strikes me, I don't know whether anyone, whether anyone, there, whether anyone agrees who's been playing the game agrees. Is that, that an interesting sentence? point you made? before as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh but the police are much less uh, officious in the new grand theft auto 4 you can get away with almost anything can you yeah you Spitting. used to if you ran down a pedestrian just because you know you were bored they used to come after you now they don't bother it's anarchy it's reflecting the actual attitude of the police in the world who's the mayor of uh, what's it called the place boris johnson is it he is the mayor of liberty yeah, city it's yeah just as he's just been elected and, and he's made massive cuts and now the police don't care about anything when was boris elected That's not my mayor opinion of liberty or the city. opinion of the big british castle it's, <laughs> it's just a, a sort of a joke it's not even a joke <laughs> it's just a stupid <laughs> just a string comment. of words uh anyway it's exciting i've been enjoying grand theft auto for the uh Graphics are massively improved, even though there's rather a lot of anti-aliasing. Oh, dear. Mm. I hate anti-aliasing. It's my worst thing. Now, listen, we got to play some music before we uh, go to the news. This is Bon Iver. He's hot. He's so hot right now in the world of... I haven't heard a single note that he's ever sang, so I'm excited to hear this. This is Skinny Love. That was Bon Iver with uh, Skinny Love. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It's time for the news with Catherine Cracknell. That's uh, Morrissey. And his song, which is called, You're Going to Miss Me When I'm Gone. No, I was just guessing and I got it wrong. <laughs> Do you, know, do you know Morrissey's song called, uh, Let the Right One Slip In? No, it sounds dirty. It does sound dirty, doesn't it? What was that one called, though? All You Need Is Me. All You Need Is Me. Well, does he, is that in the refrain? Is that part of the chorus? Does he say, all you need is me? I don't think he does, which I think is a little irresponsible. I don't like it when the obvious thing to call a song is just totally ignored in favour of a more obscure title. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they should call the song by the thing that gets sung the most. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying. exactly right. Yeah, yeah. I saw a, a, a film based on uh one of the type, based on that Morrissey song that, uh, that nicks that Morrissey song, Let the Right One Slip In. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's very good. It's a Swedish film about vampires. And it's based on the song. They nick the title. Okay. It's really good, though. I'm yeah. not going to go into it, but I just want to put the title into people's heads so when it comes out, they know to go and see it. They'll say, ooh, ooh, this makes me feel good in my pants, and I can't remember why. But talking of feeling good in your pants and also dirty song titles, uh, it's time for... It's time for Song Wars. The War of the Songs. A couple of tunes by a couple of prongs. Which will you vote for? Which one is the best? We're putting our songs to the listener test. So check it out. Yes, check it out indeed. Uh, so yes, this week, who's the, who's the guy that t suggested this? Jason. He texted us last week with Jihon. the following text. Please do an almost sexually explicit porn music style song for Song Wars. Now, it's the last time I'm going to say couple of those words mm -hmm. because of, obviously that's too strong for this program so we're going to do uh or we've done sort of a, a erotic song <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like a family a bit of family erotica things that well hang on there a second <laughs> uh, it's, it's not I a good phrase a is bad it bad of friendly. words yeah family friendly erotica yeah that's still not that good though isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> it's not good but um <laughs> T titillating should we say mine's not titillating it's just frightening <laughs> titillating. Uh, the idea that anyone would be titillated <laughs> by these songs well, they, <laughs> well you haven't heard mine yet <laughs> um what? anyway this is uh, almost definitely going to be a disaster well, are we going to flip a coin uh sure we'll flip a coin well, you you reckon what, rock, dude, paper, scissors? Uh, rock, paper, scissors? That's, no, that's make not very radio. visual is it I mean, who's got a coin <laughs> let's flip the picnic bar that's got two sides. You can't flip a picnic bar. Yeah, you can. Look at that. <laughs> oh, what are you going to call? Nuts or backing? Or Here we go. I've got a coin. Thank you. Uh, I'm quite tired today. Is that coming <laughs> across? Uh, uh, he I'm going for heads. You're calling heads to go I'm first? I'm calling heads to go first. Whatever, yeah. Okay. Whatever. It's heads. It's heads. I'm going first. Right, this song is uh, 
a kind of sexy medical type song um i know <laughs> yeah, the, the, the two of those things sometimes go together don't they not really unless People you're sometimes find a doctors sexy yeah. come on oh, there will be a lawsuit after this song you've got to imagine a very uh, uh, uh erotic sur uh, doctor's surgery yeah um you've got to imagine nurse totties <laughs> who's played by you uh in a sexy wig yeah. and dr sexy who is me right and uh, this is what happens when you visit dr sexy is doctor's ready to see you if you'd like to go through my name is Dr. Sexy, I got just what you need, but I ain't got no medical degree. Know what I mean? I diagnose that you have sexy disease. The symptoms include hotness and the wearing of tight jeans. Would you pop this in your mouth? Don't worry, it's clean. It's just a thermometer. Oh my god, no, she's hotter than anyone I've ever seen. Nurse Totties, is your diagnosis the same as mine? Yes, Dr. Sexy, it's outrageous. And I think she's so hot, it's contagious. I can't fake it, I can't take it. And I'm feeling the urge to get naked. What kind of talk's inappropriate, Nurse Totties? What kind of doctor's surgery do you think this is? Sexy, sexy doctor. Dr. Sexy. Oh, yes. Really forgot. My name is Dr. Sexy, but I'm not NHS. This is a private practice, now pop off your vest. Can I try an experimental technique I learned in Japan? They call me Dr. Sexy, and I sterilized my tools. Let's break some British Medical Association rules. Such a sexy, you'll be struck off for that. Sounds good. It's perfectly clean. <laughs> that's good, man. I'm gonna. Oh, that's that's gonna win, though, isn't it? Do you it? think? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I've, I I don't know really. <coughs> you fulfilled the remit. Too scary. It's not scary. It's sexy. Is it? Yeah. I got titillated. Uh, we have a, a lady from an Australian radio station uh, in here this morning. She, you look frightened. As she's <laughs> behind a piece of glass. And she's <laughs> making the, the the small gesture with her finger and thumb. I don't know what that means. That's a disparaging <laughs> gesture <laughs> towards <laughs> yes. <Dr>. sexy. <laughs> it is, isn't it? She's straight in there, uh, making disparaging comments about Doctor Sexy's manhood. <laughs> I, I want to go and I see Doctor Sexy. She was saying, "Your nurse Totties, you can't see Doctor Sexy. I can see him any time I like. I want to make a video for that. Yeah, that was. Be... I want to see you dressed as Nurse Totties. That would be good. Anyway. Um, uh, wearing tight jeans, though, that that can often be a problem, a genuine problem for some women. Yeah, well, Doctor Sexy identifies that. Yeah, and he he demands they come off that's good man so it's based on medical fact yeah there was lots of research went into that good good yeah. and you found the, the internet you found the the funk um button as well well i used a sample from uh, david matthews right a track called sandworm that's good man you see it's exactly the kind of vibe i was trying to go for didn't quite manage it. <laughs> i bet you did so no i went for a sort of mine is a kind of insane reworking or uh it's it's a, it's sort of a follow-up to computer love by craft work cool. and, and of course they're 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 after uh filched by um what? coldplay what it by coldplay filched. you not, mean not the other one pinched yeah uh yeah mm. filched is another word for that is it yeah yeah i know what you're thinking stop thinking that um and uh but no it, it it musically it doesn't sound like uh computer love at all but it's it, it's about dirty robots yeah here it is i'm a dirty robot please would you clean me i need to wipe down with a lovely oily rag there's something stuck inside my special tube i'm a very creepy so kind as to with dirty robots, with dirty robots, we've come from the past in search of bottles with slots. Our discs are all fluffy, it makes us quite stroppy, because we're incompatible when we get the hots. Now it's all wireless, there's the connection. It's nice to just be scancy, even if you get some knots. I think 
that Seth Nav likes me. She's seen my modem hanging out. That's right, babe, it's enormous. And it does the job, well, just about. Here, let's get connected. There we go. Now you can send me dirty pictures. Very, very slow. Now where's your lovely hard drive box? Have you got a slot for me? Hey, what's the problem? Why'd you kick me in the USB? We're dirty robots. We're dirty robots. We wish to connect with other machines with slots. We're not that picky, but we're finding it tricky. Cause no one seems to want to and we thought they'd be lots So we're sticking our cables wherever we're able Which sometimes can result in some extremely nasty shocks Dirty robots, dirty robots We'll hook up with toasters, we'll hook up with clocks We'll plug into freezers, we're filthy metal geezers To us a parking meter is a bit of a box If it's got machine parts, then that's where the fun starts And if it is electric, then of course that also rocks Dirty robots, dirty robots We come from the past in search of models with slots Our discs are all floppy, it makes us quite stroppy Because we're incompatible when we get the hots Dirty robots, dirty robots Dirty robots, dirty robots yeah, there you go. That's quite a long one as well, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's good, that's really good. I like particularly, can I say what I like? Go on then. I like the, uh, very early keyboard solo. Mm. I like it when a record just dispenses with, with lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> After a few seconds, it just gets into the keyboard solo. But then, of course, the lyrics <laughs> did come back with great import. Yes, that's true. <laughs> uh, it's like a kind of, um, first year play, isn't it? Like, uh, innuendos well, about computers be, and I stuff. Well, there'd be, I think parents would be called to meetings if that was a first year play. <laughs> Psycho school psychology. Would be I didn't make in. any jokes about faxing, at least. So no, there you go. That's something. well done. So there we go. That song was for this week. Uh, what are those songs called? I suppose mine's called Doctor Sexy. Mine's called uh, Dirty Robots. There we go. So it's Doctor Sexy versus uh, Dirty Robots. Six four zero four six is not what you should dial to send texts because you can't vote by text. For you have to wars. vote by it via email adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. Send your votes in voting for either Doctor Sexy. Or Dirty Robots. What an amazing head-to-head. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, here's some uh, proper music. This is New Order with Regret. That's like one of the <clears throat> all-time great songs, really, isn't it? I mean, you've got everything there. Yes. Sorry, I've got a mouthful of, um, Joe's buns. I've got mu- a mucky brain now after our head-to-head. No surprises there. Dirty head to head. But you know what I mean? Uh, that New Order song is so good, isn't it? That was Regret, of course, by New Order. And this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music, Saturday morning. Um, Boris Johnson's in control of London Town. Mm. And it's a lovely sunny day. Boris is going to sort it all out. He's going to get the crime sorted. We're not allowed to express any political opinions, of course, here on the Big British Castle. We're completely impartial. Uh, therefore, all we can say is that he's brilliant and awful. <laughs> he's brilliant at, at the awful. same time he's great and a disaster yeah um yeah exactly no emphasis on on either one of those words <laughs> complete impartiality that's brilliant man he's awful i just had to counterpoint you're brilliant oh i see no i was saying that you were brilliant Oh, thanks a lot so no, now you, we're, we're allowed to say that but now you've dug yourself <laughs> into a hole because there's still a lingering he's awful there <laughs> hanging in the air which you've got to balance do i yeah Say mm. it, go on, balance he's it. He's brilliant. There you go. There we go. <laughs> now he's awful. Everything. Oh, now he's we're going to be forever. He's iliant. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got there? A you're piece ho- of paper? <laughs> you're holding a piece of paper like you're about to read the news. Uh, am I about to read the news? No, you're not. Okay, you're let's have a bit more music while well, we decide what we're going to talk about it's in a, trail. a proper way. Uh, there you go, that was a session track from Primal Scream, Velocity Curl. That was from Janice Long's show way back in 1986. Yeah, she actually played that one. Did she? Yeah, Janice Long. It's a cover by Janice Long. Is it? Of that Primal Scream song, yeah. Is Janice Long in Primal Scream? Yeah. I didn't realise She's the lead that. singer. There you go, she's the lead singer. Mm. And I thought it was Bobby Gillespie. No. It's not, it's Janice, Janice Long. Long. What other bands is Janice Long in? <laughs> the Beatles. Is she? Yes. She's the best one in the Beatles. She Did is. she write the songs? Yes. Did she split them up? Yes. Because yes. she was yes. going out with yes. John Lennon. Yes. Okay, that's good. Well, I'm glad we got that all settled. Uh, Janice Long facts there. And uh, now it's time for the first of my free plays. All my free plays this week have a slightly psychedelic bent. 
Ooh. If you uh, if you don't mind me saying so, uh, I wouldn't say they're like full fully blown psychedelic songs, but they have a little air of triposity and weird we- weirdociousness. And this is from an album that's so big right now. Have you got the MGMT album, Joe? Yeah. Uh, are you enjoying that one? Uh, my girlfriend bought it. I haven't played it or listened to it it's, at all. It's really good. Is it good? Yeah, it is good. You know what? I, I feel that everyone else is doing it for me. Right, right. You're missing out. Everyone I'm, else is taking care. I know of what it. you mean. I know exactly that feeling That's you're snobby describing. Though. But you are missing out. It yeah. is proper witwocks. And there's a, a huge pile of invention going on in there. Amazing stuff. And it's sort of out of its time. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's an album I'm sure that won't date that much because it's so strange. Uh, and this is a lovely track in here. It's a sort of mini opera. It's got sections. I love songs with sections, you know? And this is called The Handshake by MGMT. And the second section after the opening little bit is, to, is a lovely little weird thing from the 60s psychedelic period in my brain hope you enjoy it this is mgmt oh it starts off it starts off quite uh, soft here we go we're into it now that's uh, franz ferdinand uh they're so hot right now and that's called shout out no it's not do you want to it's called uh, this is adam and joe here on bbc six music now we were talking about video games earlier on and uh, my uh, children, my young sons, have just entered the crazy world of video games. What have they got? What console have they got? Well, I'm easing them in there a little bit. They've been playing with my brother's Wii. Right. Uh, and yeah, which... but what? No. Carry on. <laughs> okay. Uh, which is a nice way of starting, I think, because, you know, you can assuage any guilt you have about sucking your children into the dirty world of video games by seeing them actually standing up and being physical while mm. they're playing. You know, that's one of the attractive things about the Wii. And they really do. They get up there and they're, like, totally into it. It's what amazing. are they playing? Uh, they're doing a bit of boxing there. And right. they're just standing so they've there. got Wii Sports. And Wii Sports, yeah. And it's a bit of boxing, bit of bowling, and the game, bit of golf. The, the uh, disc that comes free with it as well, they're, they're there's a, a sort of tank command thing where you, you're going around shooting tanks. It's a lot like combat mm. on the Atari video system. You remember combat? Yeah. And uh, it's brilliant. It's good fun, man. Anyway, so unfortunately my brother took the, the Wii back the other day. Oh. Uh, you know, he needs to play it. And um, and I'm rationing the video game fun to weekends, right? Just so it doesn't splurge. Weekends? Everywhere. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's a good idea, Thanks, mate. Man. I should rechristen them. Yeah. So I, I got my old uh, PlayStation 1 out of mm. the uh locker because other consoles are available of course they are um and i haven't played with it for years and years and it's pretty good man there's lots of good stuff on there there's a good bombing game called raiden where you're flying over um i don't know a place and bombing it and shooting <laughs> Always it fun. Planes. it's fun to bomb things as long as it's not real okay tony blair you didn't realize that um and uh you say something to balance that <laughs> um t- yeah tony blair well done for bombing everywhere <laughs> thumbs up bombs away there we go uh <laughs> but i was struck by the fact that they they're getting so into it these guys and uh, and they're about four and five my son so uh they've already worked out their little chance their bravura video game uh expressions you right. know what i mean when they're they're in there and they're so into it they have to shout out things you know mm-hmm. and they're really good <laughs> but they're, they're sort of exactly right in tone but they're obviously they're just like five-year-old versions of, of Let's have them. Well, uh, the top three I've got are um, you're going down, pom pom, pom pom. <laughs> yeah. Is that one of their nicknames? Uh, that's what they call them. It's a little bit like poo head, which uh, my youngest natty calls oh, people at the moment. He's going through a, insulting. a stage of calling everyone poo head, which yeah. which does happen. So I've told him that. It's well, not, hang, what do you mean it does happen? Uh, children go through a phase where they what, call having people a pooey head. Poo head. Yeah. Oh right. Okay. Um, you know, it's a nice, it's, you'll look back on it with affection one day when they, when they learn all the hardcore yeah, words. you should clean that off their heads though. It's yeah. unhygienic. You, no, no, I mean, I, I, I generally ban pooing on heads mm. uh, from the house. But yeah, so instead of saying poo head, he says, you're going down pom pom. And, but he says it like that with all that. Yeah, it's good, it's good, I like it. Uh, he also says, um, he also says, get ready to do a poo. <laughs> <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> he's threatening the he's threatening the enemy in the video game. Wow! You better get ready to do a poo because <laughs> I'm coming to get you. Well, that sounds like it needs a t- little bit of therapy. Well, no, but when they're that age, they're obsessed with it. It's all everything's about poo and we and all that kind of stuff. Actually, not we, not so much. It's say uh, it's always the poo. Um, but then <laughs> it's very Freudian. But then Frank, who's slightly older. Um, is a little more sophisticated. Some of his uh, bravura chants are uh, more psychological. He sort of says, 
Oh, would you like to come to a party? To the enemy, you see, because he's luring them nice. in. And then he's going to bomb them when they're at the party. But he sort of says it with chilling, you know, oh, and he's really excited. He's like quivering with excitement while he's playing. Oh, would you like to come to a party? <laughs> yes! There you go, pom-pom! Take Whoa. that poo head! <laughs> wow. It's good. What kind of things do you shout out when you're doing Grand Theft Auto? <sighs> uh, it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, pom-pom! <laughs> I'm going to do a poo-poo on your head, pom-pom! Shouldn't have stabbed me, pom-pom! Come to my party, pom-pom! <laughs> it's a poo-poo party, pom-pom! <laughs> How about that one? <laughs> That's good, man. I'd like to come round to your house and, uh... That's exciting. Are they going to be you. buying the Wii Fit pad to do... Are you going to do that? To, I've been thinking of doing that. Have you? That you can buy this pad, you plug it in, you do exercises. You know that there are parks and things that you can actually... I know, wear. but do it on the telly. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. I pump, might. Pump. I might. It is fun, man. It's all good stuff, that. Uh, okay, more music now. Here's the Shout Out Louds. Is this real? Have you just made this up? No one's told me about the shout out loud. Suddenly they exist. Uh, this is tonight I have to leave it. Yeah, could I have, um, extra drums, please? And, uh, a top, a cowbell topping. Certainly. Would you like, um, grooves with that? What's that? Grooves? Would you like grooves? grooves? I'd like some grooves. Could I have the, um. We don't have any. Could I have the Deacon Blue style vocals and the Cure keyboard on the side, please? Yes. Would you like a little bit of uh, Robert Smith all over that? Yes, please. Certainly, there you Very go. Very good, though. There's extra Robert Smith for Shout you. Shout out louds with Tonight I Have to Leave It. Now, I just want to say, we were just talking about video games with my young sons. It just occurred to me, uh, Frank especially hates it when people sort of talk about the fact that he said something funny. So if by any chance anyone is listening to this who knows uh, my children or anything, please don't mention it to them that we were talking about it, okay? I mean, it's a slim chance, but if it gets back to him, I'm in real trouble he'll really <laughs> he, he would hate it he would hate it wow the um the kind of power balance is slightly off it's a little bit off but there's nothing he can do about it he doesn't like the idea of people laughing at him quite or, right uh, quite right like that, you know uh anyway. they're very young and fragile things exactly what children oh i thought you meant chickens yeah i did mean chickens okay what i don't know i don't know i'm tired <laughs> very odd um there we go so now it's time for a free play uh no isn't it no we're gonna do text the nation now quick yes, the jingle yes. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. That previous moment of confusion was part of our plan to do a really shoddy show. Yeah. Uh, it was all stage managed and scripted. Yeah, it went exactly. off well, didn't it? That was really good. I was trying to think of something that was uh, very young and fragile. Chickens was the only thing I could think of. Yeah, oh. they're not. They can be of all sorts well, of ages. Exactly. I mean, chicks would be the young thing. Of the it's young Text thing. the Nation time, and this week's Text the Nation is themed around the BBC smash hit programme The Apprentice. Well, it's kind of stolen. Uh, from stolen from it yeah yeah um adam and i are both big fans of of the apprentice we watch it a lot uh and it was very good this week yeah it was brilliant the kind of matt lucas look alike <laughs> yeah uh, got got kicked out he was exactly like he's like the only gay in the village wasn't he yes uh in a suit yes <laughs> he was amazing but seemed like a very nice chap even though what confuses me is you know uh when they're being particularly hopeless mm. they'll cut to us an interview they've done of each uh contestant yeah. that they've obviously done before the series starts where the contestant is being so insanely self-aggrandizing yeah that it throws anything else they're doing in the show in, in, into complete comedy. Exactly. And Kevin's was amazing. He was saying, by the time I am 40, I'm <laughs> going to be the most powerful businessman in the world and have a house the size of Jamaica and live in a balloon <laughs> or something. I don't know. And Rafe says, I have a way with words that is better than Wordsworth and Shakespeare. Words are like I, my tools. Yeah. When I put them together, I can sell you anything right there, right now. That kind of... He said it with a little more conviction. The problem with Kevin was that you could see he didn't. He wasn't really that insanely deluded. I mean, a little bit, but... But presumably, a researcher says to them, uh, OK, we'd just like you to chat about your ambitions, mm. and imagine you're talking uh, in a world of fantasy, of insane fantasy. Just pretend for a moment you're mad and really overdo it. Would that be OK? Yes, OK, then. <laughs> 
<laughs> what <laughs> yes, do they I say to that. get them to talk like that? <laughs> anyway, that's not the point of text nation. What is the point of text nation? Point of text nation is that one of the things, that, uh, and if you don't watch The Apprentice, um, it's Alan Sugar, and he's getting two teams of uh, oh, people know this uh, nutty. I'm just saying that some people don't watch. It. I only recently came to the world of The Apprentice. He's getting two teams of people to kind of uh, pitch business ideas to real business people, and the person who gets the most uh, business out of it is the winner that week. Um, and You're this fine. Th thank you. There you go. That's what's his name, the man. And um, this week, one of the things the teams had to do was to invent a new uh, a new day uh, for a greeting card, some kind of greeting card. I'm not explaining this well. They had to come up with a new national day. That was really the hardest part of the task, wasn't yes. it? Then they had to invent a, a greetings card and go and pitch it to the big three card companies. Yeah. But part of the thing that was kind of uh, glossed over and is where they kind of failed was to pick an event that isn't yet celebrated by card giving, right? right? right. So a new national day. Yeah. Uh, they, one of them thought of like a, a, an environment day, a green day. Yes. Uh, the other team thought of National Singles Day. Which I thought was quite a good idea. They had trouble picking the actual day, didn't they? Because they went for the 13th of February, the day before Valentine's Day, and all the stores laughed the saturated. Saturated. Because all, this the saturated thing. The market's already saturated. Already saturated. You know, we've got all our shelves filled with Valentine's cards. Why do we want to confuse it with your weird Singles Day? So the Text the Nation challenge this week is... Is exactly that. Think of a new National Day. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, a cause for a holiday. It could be something that you could make a greeting card out of. Actually, should we do it specifically with the greeting card? So, like, what you would say in the greeting card for your national day? This is a good test as well, because one sits at home thinking how easy it would be and how yeah. you'd do better than those guys. Exactly. But can we do better? Because I thought the singles thing was quite good. And then I was, I was embarrassed when they, uh, when they were so humiliated in some of the meetings there. I thought, oh, I didn't think of any of those problems with it. However, the green, <laughs> the environmental card was, uh, more mental than environmental. If there was a is there a celebrity apprentice? Do we qualify as celebrities? Mm. Would we go on it if we were offered to go on it? Well, the thing that they sometimes get people on is cel uh, the apprentice you're fired. Right. Afterwards, that would no, be that's fun. not the question. If there was a celebrity <laughs> apprentice, would you go on it? Oh, well, yes, yes. Would you? Yes, you would. Yes, you would. <laughs> That's brilliant. I really look forward to that. So text 64046 uh, with your ideas for a new national day to send greeting cards for. Let's see if we can either come up with stupider ideas yeah. than The Apprentice people did or brilliant ones. 64046. Here's a bit more music. This is a free play. I vote this for the lo one of the loveliest songs ever written lyrically. Mm. If you uh, listen to the lyrics of the following song and do exactly what he says... I think you'll have very few problems in life. This is David Bowie with Fill Your Heart. This is Andy Warhol and it's take one. That's our uh, uh, version of Andy Warhol, which is the next track on that album. I'm so used to it going into it. It's yeah. weird to have it not go into it. Exactly. That's one of those albums that you know, I don't know, maybe iPod, the iPod generation. <laughs> they probably don't know uh, mm -hmm. what it's like, but the sequence of that album is definitely very important. It's like a little journey you go on. That's one of the best albums ever made, isn't it? Thanks, you yes. say that. Well done, man. I'm Thanks really, a lot. I think you did a really good job on that one. Thanks. Uh, why, what, recently what's happened? Uh, recently I've got into internet sort of stuff yeah. and I'm a bit ill. Are you? Yeah. I'm sorry to hear I had that. a Russell Harty. Did you? Yeah. Hope you get had better. To, uh, had to go into hospital. Mm. But, um. And someone threw a lolly in your eye. Someone <laughs> chucked a lolly. It got stuck in my eye. It's been tricky times, tough times. You'll be back, man. You'll be back. Yeah. You're the best. I'm working on my latest incarnation. You're the changing man. No, that's yeah. Paul Weller. I'm going to dress up like Shirley Temple. Well done. That's going to be my new image. <laughs> he's he's constantly reinventing himself. Have you seen his new image? He's like the old Madonna. He's like Shirley Temple now. He's always <laughs> reinventing himself. He's like a very old man, and he's dressed as Shirley Temple. He's, he's the rock and roll chameleon. <laughs> this is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. We're going to clarify uh, Text the Nation because we feel it was a little bit muddled. Here from Adam Buxton is a very simple <laughs> encapsulation of what Text the Nation is this week. Yes, yeah, so we want it's it's the cards, okay? It's the cards more than the day that we want from you. We want uh, we want you to plug the gaps in the greeting cards market, uh, and we want you to tell us what the thrust of your greeting cards would be. So it's exactly like what they were doing on The Apprentice. And uh, so, for example, my <laughs> is that idea any clearer? Yes, it is clearer. Yeah. It's clearer. It's the greeting cards. So, yeah. Well, I'm going to give you an example now. For example, a card for someone who uh, has just failed at something. Right. Okay. Do they exist already? 
sorry not exactly sorry you're a failure but it would something... say bad luck yeah exclamation mark on the outside i mean there, there are bad luck cards already i think and on the inside it would have a poem uh do not worry that you have failed it's important to try again maybe you'll succeed next time and you won't look like such a pen <laughs> yes and then the last two yeah. letters or something um, like that yeah. obviously that was just made up off the top of my head That's and uh brilliant. you'll have a bit more time i was thinking just don't let the bastards grind you down yeah mm -hmm. just for a little uplifting come on yeah we'll, we'll think of some more i'm determined to come up get with back on better. the horse something like that something lame i mean it's a greeting card it can be lame yeah uh the other the other idea that our producer jude had was some kind of um conciliatory card for neighbors maybe you've upset the neighbors and you want to send them a special card to say sorry about the rubbish dispute or sorry about the noisy party with the bass frequencies last night it was a little bit annoying or something like that you know i'm going to think of something better better than yeah, that during the next song while i was watching the apprentice i was thinking i could do better than this it's not that's a better idea out there i'm convinced right. there is single stays brilliant six four zero four fire. six is is the text number i'm actually going to text mine into myself one of the people then i'll get um, to read it out one of the guys from tesco's or whatever was saying who's going to send a card to a single i thought that was a stupid point to make i would send a card to a singleton friend of mine i thought you know valerie singleton i'd send her one no problem uh, uh here's here's yeah. isaac hayes with the theme from shaft the theme from hello uh, can you hear me the theme from shaft that's a, a a new cop film that'll be in the cinema soon starring isaac hayes uh, also known as Chef, of course. Uh, and this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. It's time now for the news, read by Catherine Cracknell and Joe Yu. It's uh, that Santo Gold with uh, Les Artistes. Yes, I'm just checking. I got it the, r the right way around. I did get it the right way around. Well done. Thank you very much. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. You join us in the middle of Text the Nation, and the challenge this week is to beat the Apprentice contestants at the task that was set in The Apprentice last week, which was to come up with a new... Uh, national day that would be suitable for sending cards for uh the texts are already coming tumbling in gaps in the greeting cards market i had a couple of ideas yeah go on then i think i've had a brilliant idea have you i think i've thrashed the contestants already oh my goodness. uh you should celebrate my, my idea is to take an existing day mm -hmm. but apply cards to it april fool's day cards but cards with pranks in them oh. like little uh springy snakes right or a stink bomb or a little chip that makes the noise <laughs> <laughs> when you open it you <laughs> yeah. just instead because april fool's day is a good day you know mm. it's a it's a matter of national pride and people don't really bother anymore kids play pranks on each other but adults don't really bother that much there's not that much spaghetti and trees anymore well there's there? all the tedious media ones but they're mm. kind of you know boring and you can always tell they're uh not real but cards for that that would yeah. be good wouldn't it that is good. i like the idea of a card that goes nah another idea uh, that one or two people have alluded to in their text is a national honesty day Ooh. so a day when you're allowed to say whatever you want without fear of reprisal so th this would be brilliant you could you could say things to your girlfriend husband or wife or boyfriend mm. that you've been meaning to say for ages uh, but you haven't got had the courage to say that sounds like a national disaster day well, no it's just a refreshing day you know it's just people get stuff out in the open no such It'll thing it'll be a great day there's no such thing and you could have all sorts of cards um about how you hate an individual's jumper yeah how they stink mm -hmm. uh, or, or a smelly someone someone sent that one in you know and uh, then the next day you could have national reprisals day exactly <laughs> tina in east Dulwich. maybe <laughs> next week because you need time to market the cards <laughs> yeah the same day the following week reprisals that's day. a good idea yeah. what they'd be cards with, with simmering, razor blades in them. Yeah, simmering resentment cards and and powders <laughs> threatening powders <laughs> no that's the terrorists doing that isn't well, it it's revenge day okay uh, here's another one that's come in from Viv in Dundee, and I'm not sure how practical this is, but she certainly put, or he has certainly put some thought into it. Happy Marine Biologist Day mm -hmm. inside the card. Some people say you're fishy, some people say you're wet, but a more committed m marine biologist I have never met. <laughs> <laughs> lots of love viv from dundee is he a marine biologist uh one would hope so you'd hope he was oh, this is insane <laughs> uh amy crosthwaite suggests pancake day cards mm -hmm. yeah they could be made of pancake right. or be in the form of a stencil so when you sprinkle your icing sugar over the pancake you get an amusing shit that is a very good idea that is a good idea i like the f i like them being made of actual pancakes that's insane it's well, totally okay, what about a sachet of pancake mixture inside? That's a better idea. And then you could uh, fry the card. 
and eat it. Here we made available paper. Yes. All these ideas are copyright Adam and Joe at the Big British Castle. If we do edible decide to cards. market them, edible cards. Right, right, rice paper. Yum. Everyone likes rice paper. Everyone likes eating an object. Keep the text coming in six four zero four six, uh, and if you can beat any of those, they're already very good. We've already beaten the contestants, I reckon. Now here's a little blast. Here's a stinky blast from the past. This is Malcolm McLaren. That's not a name you hear very much, unless you're watching The Baron. Yeah, which I want to talk about after we hear uh, this one. This is Double Dutch. Wow, sounding really good, I reckon. Malcolm McLaren and the Supreme Dream Team were they called? Something along those lines. Are you taking that one over, Buffalo Gals? Uh, I really like that album. I liked it when I was a kid. And did you know that I got a set of felt pens and copied the mural from the Keith Haring mural from the inside of that album oh, all over my bedroom that's wall? Right. Yeah, I remember you did. And then that. I was so embarrassed about it the next day. <laughs> I had to cover it with posters. At least you didn't go around talking like Malcolm McLaren. Was he trying to do an American accent? I don't there? know what he was trying to do there. He's a deeply, deeply confused man. I mean, he's got his own personal manifesto fairly clearly worked out in his mind as a kind of pantomime villain. Have you seen The Baron at all? No. And before we get into that, I should point out to listeners that that album is a uh, Duck Rock is coming out in a remastered version. Uh, later this year and somebody's making a film about how it was made no yeah so there's going to be a whole big duck rock thing happening later in the year and malcolm mclaren's going to be in town talking about it. it's a long way in the future not till september he's going to be at the ica he was a mayoral candidate last time around wasn't he mclaren was he i mean uh, i don't know what kind of platform he was on i think he was taking himself quite seriously when he was a mayoral candidate but when he was on the baron which is a show on itv it's a reality show that uh, is airing at the moment um he was not in any way taking it seriously if you haven't seen this program it was sort of ill-fated from the beginning really um Mike Reed uh, from EastEnders appeared on the show, and uh, of course he died last July. Uh, and that put the whole thing into, you know, they weren't sure if they were going to show the program or not. And now ITV have said that in a tribute to the late Mike Reed, ITV will air the Baron. That's the that's what they said. <laughs> it's a tribute. It's not a question of actually just trying to get some you know, use out of this show that they've ploughed all this money into. It's a tribute to Mike Reed, and a uh, fitting one as well. He would have been so proud of this amazing show. Uh, basically, what happens is they get three people. It's Mike Reed, it's Malcolm McLaren, and it's one other person who go off to this remote highland town called Gardenstown in northeast Scotland. And they get to know the community, and they hang out there a little bit. And this they... is a community that doesn't have a baron. Right. And needs a baron. Needs a little baron. I don't know exactly. Not that anyone has a baron. What would the baron do? Is it, yeah. It's sort of like being the mayor, I think. And so they, they have to kind of, um, you know, uh, what's the word when you are campaigning? There you go. Have to kind of campaign, uh, to be the baron. And last week, I only tuned into the show last week. I caught the last half hour. That was your first mistake. Yeah. It was accidental. I was just about to go to bed and I was su suckered in there because uh, I was actually suckered in by the tease that after the break, these shocking scenes with Malcolm McLaren being manhandled off the podium because his uh, campaign speech is going so badly wrong that the locals have had enough. And they're booing him and they want to get rid of him. And basically, there's all these shots of McLaren kind of he's totally he hates it in this village he thinks it's really boring and he's going around going it's so boring here it's so drab even the fish have gone away from this town it's pathetic what they need is a and he his idea for a, a special Good impression national day there. was um to do a sin day and you you know and you close the church and everyone can just sin all they want and they can get drunk and they can fornicate all they want they can do what they want it'd be just so much better than what what they've got at the moment it's so boring and they're always going about god and all this kind of stuff anyway so he he suggests all this to the locals right and first of all he starts by saying after mike reed has delivered a very moving speech about oh it's lovely being here you've really taken me in your hearts you're wonderful people this is a great community i'd love to be the baron mclaren turns up and he goes I just want to say, I think it's so boring here, and it's the it's the most boring place I've ever been to, and you're all so pathetic and boring. And he goes on about all oh, this. Everyone, everyone's standing there like a little bit gobsmacked. But then they start booing, right? And then they then they start getting uh, quite angry. And then he starts. He calls Jesus a sausage at one stage. He says Jesus, he's just a sausage. You know, I mean, it's nonsense, harmless nonsense uh, from the brilliant mind of McLaren. He's a exactly that's his whole bag 
But then they go completely nuts, these people, right? They absolutely won't have Jesus being called a sausage and uh, by, Mac- right. by McLaren, quite rightly. And um, and they don't think it's funny in any way. And McLaren's clearly just playing the pantomime dame, as he always does, you know. But they go completely bananas, and the, and the guy says, right, that's it, you've had your say. And then McLaren starts turning it into a free speech issue, right, and saying, no, no, you're you're handling this all wrong. I'm just having my free speech, and if you can't deal with that, you're going to look very bad if you get rid of me, because you're censoring me. And, uh, you know, and he's right in a way. They totally overreact. And then the whole thing turns into like a kind of mad lynch mob, right? And obviously they, they've cut the thing to make it look more dramatic. But all you get to see all the sort of APs and producers of the show kind of wandering around all these Nathan Barley types, all like madly apologizing to the locals and trying to quell this riot that's starting, right? And saying, Oh, we're really sorry, really sorry. I'm so sorry. We didn't realize he was going to say that. And, and, uh, look, it's fine. It's fine. Cut the cameras, cut the cameras. And it's all going off, man, you know. And, uh, they're sort of saying, they, the, the voiceover is saying, we don't know if the show's gonna go ahead at this point, and, uh, McLaren has to be whisked away in a car because there's this lynch mob after him. It was amazing! But, I mean, it was, it was a sort of amazing 15 minutes in an otherwise completely indefensibly rubbish program, as far as I can tell. Do you know what I mean? But I just had to share it with you. Well done, that was- It, it yeah. concludes next week, incidentally, if you wanna see how the whole thing wraps up. I think it's on Thursdays on ITV1, fairly late at night, where it belongs. It's a tribute to the late Mike Reed. That's lovely. Very touching. Uh, so there you go. That's Malcolm McLaren News. Now, here's a free play for you, listeners. This is another of, of my surreal, slightly surreal, strange free plays this week. It's a short one, though. It's by the Ruby Suns. They're from New Zealand, I think, aren't they? Uh, one of the many great things to come out of New Zealand in recent times. And this is called Gibble. That's the far side with uh, Passing Me By. That's a classic track. And I do once again direct you towards uh, Fat Lip's solo album, The Loneliest Punk if you like the far side and you're fiending for some of their stuff i keep forgetting to get hold of that the yeah, loneliest it's downloadable punk. the loneliest punk it's a couple of years old now but it was released only in the u.s on cd i think but is around uh, as a download so i'm writing that down out. yeah it's very very good it's very rude otherwise i'd play more of it on the radio rude every single track has I'm swearing crossing that out now it's time for Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Text the nation this week. Uh, the challenge is to beat the apprentice contestants at their own game by coming up with a better idea for a national day and a greetings card. If you saw the apprentice, you'll know uh, exactly what we mean. If you didn't, what are you doing? You're missing out. It's a good show. Here's one from Andrew from Sheffield. Hi, Adam and Joe. I was thinking maybe of a series of cards that would appeal to the modern youth. And here's the poem inside. Quote, sorry about the knife fight. <laughs> here's the poem. I cut your face and laughed and watched you lay there and moan. But now I feel really bad, so I've deleted it from my phone. I won't do it again, promise. <laughs> That's a good idea, isn't it? Hoodie cards. Hoodie cards. Here's another one from Stephen Ipswich. Uh, he says, how about and quote are we still in love with each other because if not we could just you know drift apart kind of am- <laughs> drift apart kind of amicably day right do you get that uh, if both partners get the same card from each other then great they've recognized a problem with their relationship without talking about it that's a good so it's a day idea. where if you love each other you send a card if only one card is sent mm. or no cards are sent then without having to bother with the conversation yeah that's it you split up well, if no cards are sent... Yeah. I like, say you and I were in love. Yeah. And we were living together. Right. As man and man. Yeah. But things had gone wrong in the sack. Right. And we'd you fallen out of love. You don't have to go love. into what the problem is for everybody. That I don't is want the everyone problem, knowing though. our problems. That is the problem. And we haven't talked about it, and there's just an elephant in the room. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I do know what you mean, but why are you telling so everybody? On, well, because so far this day hasn't been invented. But had it been invented, the day would come along and nothing would be said, but on the telly it would go, oh, of course, it's National Do You Love Each Other Day. <laughs> I wonder if you'll be getting a card. That sort of thing. We'll yeah. just eat our breakfast in silence and uh-huh. ignore it. Yeah. Especially sort of after the last night. <laughs> in the sack. We will, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but we'll both have selfish. one eye on the letterbox. So selfish. Nothing comes through the letterbox. Yeah. Apart from maybe a card from me saying so, I love you. But that's good though, isn't it? If nothing no, comes No, it means through... you don't love me. 
And so we have to split up. Anyway, we're not spending any more time on that just because you don't understand it. Otherwise, we'd spend hours on everything. <laughs> Ready for the next one? This is from Andrew in exactly, Brighton. Exactly what it was like. That was just in, a clever way to move on. Night. It wasn't <laughs> meant with any actual look, just because we're living together and things have got wrong. It's exactly the problem. Here's one from Andrew in Brighton. I envisage a card congratulating someone on remaining alive. <laughs> There's not enough fanfare to recognise this morbid victory, though etiquette might get a bit tricky. What age would it become appropriate? You could call it Keith Richards Day. Yes, National Keith Richards Day. Yeah. Good idea. <laughs> oh my God, you're still alive. W would you say, and the older they were, the more frequently you'd have to send it. The bigger the card. <laughs> By the time, if they got over the what, one, <laughs> one, the 100th birthday, yeah. you'd have to send them an enormous card every day. A giant card. Or what, what about a so long, <laughs> what about a long loo roll style card that you just feed through the letterbox endlessly? <laughs> like a toilet roll. The card would be so big it would fall on them. <laughs> and that would and be kill the end. Them. It would, yeah. Be the the irony, irony, uh, one, uh, one final one from Rich, uh, in France, in Maribel, in France. Oh, oh hey, that's where Dominic uh, Brigstock did his uh, comedy festival. <laughs> no, not Dominic Brigstock, Marcus Brigstock. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, his Unpacked. email is, here's my suggestion for a greeting card, a conciliatory card following an argument with your wife. On the front, it says, sorry, my love. No, honestly, I am. <laughs> Inside, the rhyme reads, My dear and loving wife, we've argued, as you know. I was wrong and you were right, so please now let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your uh, ideas coming in. 64046, email adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. What is it time for now? Top, top of the hour, top sweeper, of the hour. followed by some classic teardrop explosion. BBC Six Music. <laughs> well, we were talking, we mentioned earlier on the syndrome of songs that have a misleading title like the title of that song should be it's just a story in fact i think mm. it's it, well it's called trees in brackets it's just a story i think isn't it and um, maybe that's how it turned up but calling it treason that's willfully misleading by julian cope and teardrop explodes because the word treason i don't think is even mentioned once in the lyrics there i'm not i could be wrong that's a very reductive point of view because uh, a song that isn't named after the chorus is is pointing you towards a different level of meaning don't, don't you care, know people don't. will know that chorus no, anyway no, no. the extra title points them towards something subtextual no. maybe an area of the lyrics they wouldn't have been interested not in previously or adds a total new patina to the oral experience can, of the <clears throat> can you say aural our all. yeah because then yeah. it's otherwise it's just oral yeah which is our all. Different. no you're right wrong what um all of that i don't agree with any of that right none of it because but, but what it comes down to is what do you say when you go into a record shop having heard the thing on the radio or whatever you know you what you say can i have it's just a story can i have until you realize it's just a story what you mean treason you idiot no you can't exactly you don't know the band well exactly. enough to own their records exactly. get the name of the song right before you come into my shop you pathetic cd buying wimp yes that's exactly the occasion i'm talking about <laughs> who calls anybody a wimp these days uh same people that call people wallies wallies <laughs> And say something stonking. <laughs> Stonk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Lenny Henry likes calling things stonking. Uh, yeah. The Red Red Nose Day is all about calling things stonking, isn't it? Yeah. I like calling people wallies, though. I think that's a good name. Well, you're the guy, then. I'm the wally guy. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Keep your text the nation uh, stuff coming into 64046. Your ideas that can beat the contestants of The Apprentice at thinking of new national days. A little more music? Uh, yes, this is... Uh, uh, Why? Well, it's confusing. Justice. Just say the words, read them out. Well, yeah, but it says DVNO. Is that an acronym? But there's no dots in between the uh, <laughs> letter words, so I don't understand it. Is Am I supposed to say do no and read the V like a U, like in Roman times? The band's called Justice. DVNO stands for Divino, reveals de Rosne, who's one of the band. Quote, in every suburb of the world, in every city, there's always a nightclub called El Divino. Clubs where you have to wear a white shirt to get in. A quote that proves that uh, we can't relate to this record at all, because uh, we never go to clubs. Should have read it's aimed notes. at a completely different section of the community, but we're going to play it anyway so that our non-club going listeners can feel what it's like to go to a club. <laughs> Here's Justice with Divino. Uh, that is Justice with DVNO or Divino. Uh, they are from France. They're from Paris. And uh, the two members of the band Justice are Xavier de Rosne and the Jasper de They were They Gaspard. were versus Simeon, right? Justice versus uh, Simeon? Yes, is that someone different? Yes, that's like... someone different. How can you have two people called no, no, no. Justice? That is the ones. That's the same one. They are the ones. She said it wasn't. 
Oh, I don't know. Uh, but yes, they are, I think they are the justice that were up against Simeon. And that's what it sounds like if you go to a club now. Exactly. Well, the, this is what happened. Uh, Xavier, he was sat round with uh, Gaspar in Paris and he was saying, you know, Gaspar, don't you find when you go to a town, in, uh, there's always a club. He was saying this in a club. It's very, called, the music was very loud, hence the shouting. Divinos. Don't you find that? That's always the case, isn't it? Yes, it is. Shall we write a song about it? With, that's a nice idea. Yeah, we should. It's a good observation, though. Don't you think it's something everyone can relate yes, to? Yes, I know how the song will go. Yes. A bum, bum, bum. Oh, the club, the club, the club. I have a suggestion yes. for the song. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes, I like In it. between those bits that you said. Yes, it's Funky House. Everybody loves Funky House. <laughs> how can you not love Funky That's House? That's my idea for the it's song. Just funky and good times, Ooh, you know. We're going to make a lot of money from the song. Yes, finally we can buy the special poodle we want. And helmets. And dress you've, it like a little Nazi. You've gone German. But, uh, yes, We're I from am from France. German. We're French people. Nazi are. poodle. We teach it to goose step. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I've taken a drink from someone. <laughs> I think it is spiked. I don't like you anymore. You're out of justice. Uh, I'm dead. Get out of justice. I'm solo now. Just me, Xavier de Rosne. I'm from Paris. That's what it was like. That's exactly what it was like. It's like a documentary about how mm. that song, Divino, was created. Well, it's the end of the show now. No. That lasted for an hour. Thanks for listening. We're still here I'll for four, 45 more minutes. Mo minutes. We've we've still got more stuff, uh, text coming in about um, new greeting cards and new events. Therein, thereby, thereof. And also, we have to remind you of our sexy, sexy Song Wars songs. That'll be in the last half hour. Yep, and in a second, I'm going to talk you through my Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull playing cards. Ooh, exciting movie exclusive! That have some amazing pictures from the forthcoming Indiana Jones film <laughs> that I'm going to describe and we can try and guess. <laughs> This Why is, will they happen? This is like a high-end movie gossip show, isn't it's it? It's very exciting. But I first, have got some playing cards, and I'm going to tell you what the pictures are on them. Here's a free play first. This is Everything uh, But The Girl from about 84, I think. This is another bridge. Everything But The Girl from the days before they wore, were a an extraordinary contemporary dance combo when they used to be just sort of guitars and a little pinch of miserability uh, from 84. That was another bridge. Now, uh, unless you live on a desert island... Unless mm -hmm. you've been living under a rock... Or on Mars, <laughs> yeah. um, you'll know that there's a new Indiana Jones film coming out. Uh, it's, what, 15 years or something insane since the last one? Right. Long, very, very long time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, but a new one's coming out. With Indiana Jones and the, and the uh, metal Zimmer frame. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Because he's so old. Mm. <laughs> nice. Uh, mm. So what do you know about it, Adam? What do you know about the story? It's called Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. What, what do you know about it? He's, uh, he's, got, he's got a hat. Uh, he wears a whip. Uh, he's old. He's looking for a crystal skull. Do you know anything about the crystal skull? What is the crystal skull? Well, did the Martians make it? Did they, though? I don't know. Do you did know they? what it is? it real? Does it I exist remember in it the from, world? I remember it from the titles of Arthur C. Clarke's Mysterious mm, World. Which was a fantastic series in the 80s with uh, Arthur C. Clarke, the, the late, great Arthur C. Clarke, yep. discussing all the mysteries while walking along the beach next to his house in wherever it was, Nobles Island. Uh, Mars. Mars. And he <laughs> also had, there was a great spin-off book from that series as well. Yes. Which did the rounds at school. You know? Looking through all those pictures there. Oh, look at that monster. There's a monster. It's real. Crop circle. Yeah, the crystal skull is, is, is an actual thing, isn't it? It's like an Aztec, uh, skull, mm -hmm. but it's, f it's made of glass and it's dated to, uh, before a time when there were tools, glass making tools right. or, or blowing, but yet it has no sign of any kind of tool work on it. Yeah. They can't detect where it was made. Do you, do you, does that make sense? Yeah. So it's very exciting. Uh, but I've got this packet of playing cards. Oof, they got from a shop in London. More exciting. I think. They're Indiana Jones. Are playing cards and of course it's very exciting they come it's from a bit a, like mm, they what? come from a, a time before time but a time before <laughs> these cards were there's officially no, released there's no sign of any moldings it's, on them it's not clear how the cards came into existence <laughs> and indiana how jones is probably looking for them came came to possess them indiana joe cornish <laughs> <laughs> and the playing cards of spoilerage <laughs> how did you uh, come to possess them indiana joe oh, i gave 399 to a man in a shop in forbidden planet yes <laughs> well somewhere next door to there <laughs> yes uh and anyway of course uh images and secrets about the plot of this film are very exciting and closely guarded secrets <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a bit like before when the Phantom Menace came out, and I, like a massive idiot, bought all the toys <laughs> and then saw the film and realised what an arse I was. But you're still getting I'm excited. Doing it again because, to be honest, Indiana Jones means more to me than Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was more excited. It just hit me at the perfect age. Fair I, enough. I thought it was a better, a more exciting. Is that wrong to say? No, it's, it's brills. So I'm very excited. And here are some of the images on the card. Here, there's one particular image here. And I'm not spoiling a lot. I don't think. I actually don't know what I'm doing, what I'm spoiling. What the hell are you there's doing, There's an image Indiana here. Joe? Look at this. It's Indiana Jones. He's gone in quicksand. This is the Six of Clubs. He's fallen through the mud. He's in quicksand. Sheila LaBeouf. And is that Karen Allen or Ray Winstone? Uh, next, next to him. Oh, I have no idea. Give it. It looks it's a bit me. like Karen Allen. It's Karen Allen and Sheila LaBeouf. And Indiana Jones is up to his waist in quicksand. What's Shia using to help him climb out of the quicksand instead of a rope or a whip? A snake. A snake? Let me see the and card what's again. what's Indiana Jones frightened of? Snake! He hate- I hate snakes! You've got to get out of the hole by touching a snake, but- That's brilliant. Do you think Why that's brilliant? You, is a snake really wow. the only thing that Shia LaBeouf it's has It's the only thing that comes to hand. He's surrounded by trees and creepers. Could he not grab a tree? Don't be so stupid. Sorry. Well, it would be undramatic to have a tree and creeper. He hates snakes! Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I hate that's creepers clever. too! It's the kind of st idea that thing I hate more than snakes, it's creepers. Here's another one. Um, what's his name? John Hurt is in it. Is he? We believe. Rumor is he plays Abner. Was he called Abner? I think the dad, uh, the dad of Karen Allen. Oh, yes. You know, who's mentioned in, in Raiders. Uh, -huh. uh and he's holding on this playing cards. It's the Queen of Diamonds. He's holding the Crystal Skull, but he's holding it sideways. And the Crystal Skull has a very elongated cranium. Oh, look at it's that. It's an alien It skull? looks exactly like Alien from the Ridley from Scott aliens. film. There you go. And from AVP, Requiem. Rumour has it that maybe uh, there are aliens at the end of the film. Nobody really knows. Some S people have suggested that Indiana Jones gets into the spaceship and then they're going to re-release Close Encounters with him coming out of it. No. and But the aliens in the charge pilots. of the spaceship... It fits in terms of the timeline. ...are from Come on. the alien film, and then Predator turns up, then Indiana Jones has to battle Predator and Alien. Wow. It's Indy AVP Requiem Nightmare. The final card is the Joker. Who's <laughs> going to be on the Joker? Jack Nicholson. Ray Winston. Ray Winston. The Airwolf himself. Ooh. And look at that, he's trying to stop something from happening. He's holding a torch! Stop it! Leave I've, Indy alone! I've got a metal torch! I'm yeah. looking forward to that scene. He's trying to bat away something. Something's just about it. I, I bet someone's gonna throw spiders or bugs at Ray Winston. Oh. And he's got a torch to fight him off. That's very exciting. So, there you go. We hope that's uh, tickled your fancy that's about good. Indiana Jones. Ooh. Not bad for three ninety nine. Indiana Jones. Oh, they've airbrushed his face on the cards, though. He's not looking Have as they? craggy as he does in real life. It's just an oil painting, probably. You reckon? Uh, this is Soul Wax with too many DJs. Is it? No, oh, it's Invisible's God's trail. Sake. What is it, Invisible's? What is the Invisible's? Why can't you just play a trail to make me look good? Play the song to make me look good. Should have, yeah. Play the trail, play the You're song. You're undermining song, him. Song, trail, trail, song. What are you talking about, trail. Indiana Joe? Trail! Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, uh, Soul Wax anything to do with, uh, Audio Slave? No. No, nothing. I don't know why I've got them bracketed in my head. I think maybe they're bracketed in the, under the section, Music I Will Never Go Out and Spend Any Money On. <laughs> uh, I'm only joking. Of course, that was they're amazing. Brilliant. Uh, they're brilliant. A kind of, uh, collision of styles, a little bit of human beatboxing in there, and then just some noise. Chuck it all in. Some sounds. Throw uh, some it all. Shouting. See what sticks. That was too many DJs. Fingers crossed for a hit. Uh, now, uh, we are in the midst of Text the Nation, and we're asking you guys to send in ideas for greeting cards and special days that those yeah. greeting cards would celebrate. We're asking you to beat the apprentice contestants at this week's task, come yeah. up with a better national day and a card to send for it. Here's one from Jan in Hitchin. He says, how about a sorry I slept with your partner? It's just I was feeling a bit sad and needed to bolster my self-esteem besides their very attractive card. <laughs> Certainly a gap in the market. Yeah. Surely that's quite a big gap, I would think. Because that's a tricky situation and you need to apologise, but you don't want to get punched. That's right. Perfect to do with a card. I think that's a very good idea. Here's one from Joe. Not me. Mm. Uh, he or she says, how about not a sorry you're leaving card, but a when are you leaving card? <laughs> a day when colleagues can get together and buy a card for an irritating colleague. So, yeah, that's encouraging. Bullying, though, isn't it? Office bullying. That is office bullying. That's very bad, Joe. We're reporting you to the police, because, of course, <laughs> bullying is now a crime. <laughs> and you will be, uh, you will be, have your head cut off. That's a uh, that's Which extreme. is a very extreme, I know. For but, a case know, of mild office bullying. Ever since the Tories got back into power, things have changed. <laughs> Here's another one from Johnny. Uh, my idea is for a National Stranger Day. On July the 1st, everyone who wants to take part sends an anonymous card with either the text 
hello stranger or don't be a stranger in the middle the cards are then placed in huge boxes around train stations shopping centers and bus stops whoever wants a card can take one thus everyone gets to know their fellow countrymen this will promote <laughs> togetherness and general social harmony <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea it's a lovely idea Where's wait the... for it yeah the cards are made of recycled national stranger day cards <laughs> 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 apart from the first year obviously when they're made of steel <laughs> <laughs> okay, very very good johnny they're made of charcoal uh, he sounds nice johnny why i think um i might call him up and make friends with him that's good man we'll have some more of those uh after the news and some music but right now here is the news here on bbc six music <laughs> Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Did we say we we're going to do a new Text the Nation jingle? I think we might have. Or maybe a new Song Wars jingle. Maybe we should have needed a... remixing. What we should do is just have a little bit. Uh, a few weeks of a new jingle, right? And it won't be as good as the old jingle. Mm. And then we'll go back and we can call it the oh, classic jingle. Like seeing an old friend again. Yeah, exactly. That's a good idea. Classic jingle. So before that, sorry, mm -hmm. mate. Um, before that, you heard listeners, the hives there. That was main offender. Carry on. Okay, we're going to uh, wrap up Text the Nation. And this week, we're seeing if we can beat the apprentice contestants at their own game. <laughs> come up with a better solution to the task that was issued this week, which was to come up with a national day and a card to celebrate said day. So far we've had some very good ideas, but here are even more good ideas. This one's from Wilski. Wilski. Normski's brother, probably. Normski's mate. He says, how about an, quote, I like you, you know, you're okay day. This has probably got the biggest market potential of any such card stroke day. Is it this for a... What? Sorry, is this is this um, intersexual or is this just to any any person? and to anybody? Right, I like you. You're okay. You're okay. Yeah, and you're, you're not special. Hmm. You know, I don't want to know you, but you're okay. You're all right. You haven't yeah. offended me. And the uh, potential profit must run into billions of pounds. Many people will f simply feel compelled to send cards to everybody they know. <laughs> and probably even people they don't know, just to avoid being seen as showing bad form. I'm almost certain that's true. That's quite a good idea, isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> because you need to feel a certain amount of emotion to compel no, you to buy the, the card in the, the first the place. The marketing push is so huge right. that you have to do it. Okay. You feel like a stingy stinker if you don't do it. Yeah. And you've got to send them to everybody. Oh, uh, now I understand. Yeah, I think that's a very good... I think Sugar would go for that. Okay. Uh, here's one from Helen. How about a national binge drinking day? Mm. It's become a national institution in itself. It's about time we became proud of it, started to celebrate it with pointless cards and mugs. Here's the uh, poem. Go out there and get drunk, but try not to call your ex and cry. Enjoy it because tomorrow's Monday and don't jump off a building thinking you can fly. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't scan particularly well we need to work on the poem I i'm think. pretty sure helen was drunk out of her mind when she well, uh, she's doing research actually wrote that she's researching the day I'm here's one joking, from ed norrie in bournemouth drunk. Uh, how about a card for national coming out day mm. one day each year someone who's been anxious about admitting to their friends and parents that they're gay could send cards out on this day as a way of broaching the subject without the awkwardness of discussing it directly that's a good idea sample poem for a son to his mum mm. Dearest mum, I know you dreamt one day you'd be a gran. I'm sorry this could never be. I've shacked up with a man. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, it's a good idea. But, of course, that's not uh, necessarily the case. You can always adopt. Uh, perhaps the card could could include a picture of... Well, you include that in the rhyme, then. Mm, yeah. What well, rhymes with adopt? Brackets. You could... Well, you could just put brackets. You could always adopt. Yeah. Although, you could always adopt. Uh, yeah. No, it's a nice rhyme. It's not quite so poetic, I agree <laughs> with you, but... Perhaps the card cover could include a picture of a respected gay celebrity to endorse your act of honesty, such as Daffid, the only gay in the village from Little Britain. <laughs> he is very well respected, <laughs> isn't he? He's the, he's the figurehead the gay community exactly. really want. Yeah. Here's another one from Geraldine and Dave, a team effort. I would like to wish you a very belated what hang on dear adam and joe their idea is very happy wednesday <laughs> i reckon it'll catch on fast I, this is interesting i was thinking about this the, the, the best day of the week what mm. is it? well let's face it it's everyone's least favorite day oh, I like equidistant it. between the joys of the weekend that's a scientific fact i'm sure alan sugar would be impressed by the chance to exploit people's gullibility 50 twice times a year i like wednesdays <laughs> Uh, here are some other short ones. Andrew in Sheffield, a card saying, good luck with the reality TV show. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Sell a lot of those. Exactly, because so many people appear on them these days, right? He suggested another one. Congratulations on your granddad going gay. <laughs> I don't know what national trend that's reflecting. That's a smaller market. It's a niche market there. It's a good idea, though, if you're a granddad, you've got the uh, the breeding side of life out of the way. Sex life has dried up. Maybe go gay. Hmm. 
Yeah, just, just, a, t- just a tip. Yeah, uh, and that's pretty much it. Do you want to hear the last one? I the last idea yeah. I had. This is so bad that I'm uh, I'm hesitating to read it out. Why not not read it? That's a good idea. Do you not read it? No, but now I've mentioned it. it. It's a card for people who've had arguments about the um, remote control. Mm. <laughs> and the, um, <laughs> but it does happen a lot, though. It is yeah. the, this is the thing? I mean, it's a cliched observation. Spit though. it out. Come on. Okay. Just say it. I've noticed that you've been remote because I'm flicking the TV remote. You seem to think that I'm ignoring your telewatching vote. It's not that I don't want to watch America's Top Model again. I'm just checking all the options in case we're missing dragons, Den. Uh, here's the last Shadow Puppets with My Mistakes Were Made For You. Mark, that's the uh, last Shadow Puppets with My Mistakes Were Made For You. Now it's time for... It's time for Song Wars, the war of the songs, a couple of tunes by a couple of prongs, so check it out. And we're very privileged to be joined on the phone by Jason. Hello, Jason. Hi there. Uh, Jason is the man who suggested the theme for this week's Song Wars. Uh, Did you not, Jason? I did indeed, yes. You sent us a text, it said, please do an almost sexually explicit porn music style song for Song Wars. Now, have you heard these songs yet, Jason? I have, yes. Uh, and, um, well, maybe we should get your response after the songs, do you think? After you've heard them a second time? Because often on a first hearing, a song can be confusing and difficult. But then he's going to have to sit on the phone for another five minutes oh, listening right, to our drivel. over with now. What, what do you think of the songs, Jason? Uh, I, um, I feel violated. <laughs> really? That's good. Say no more. I think that's, that's very good. In, in a pleasant way or unpleasant way? Um, uh, in a dirty way. In a dirty way. <laughs> well, that sounds as if the songs have been successful. Yeah. Are they erotic enough for you? They were, they were spot on. Uh, yeah, is it the kind of thing you were thinking of? Uh, or? Do- Dr. Sexy was, was exactly what I was thinking of, yes. Yeah, exactly. You weren't thinking about dirty robots? Um, <laughs> uh, not, not often, no. Yeah. Okay, fair. They can work together, though. The future uh, of the NHS uh, promises to include both sexy doctors and dirty robots. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll see my GP. Yeah, I'd make your appointment right now. What's the weekend got in store for you, Jason? Um, well, well, no, we can guess that. What, what the weekend's got in store for Jason? Sexy films. Dirty magazines. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll probably be sitting around in my pants. <laughs> do, you, do you do uh, what National John pants Candy Day. did in Splash and drop change at women's feet and then look up their skirts? Uh, I, I think my wife would kill me. Right. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> done that. Come on. Um, Mirrors on shoes. Uh, listen, Jason, oh, thank dear. you so much uh, for that your suggestion. That was in Splash. That's a family film. It's Splash. We've never done it. John Candy did it. <laughs> He's a family fun favourite. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot for your suggestion. Very nice to speak to you and have a great weekend. And thanks for listening to our show, by the way, Jason. Oh, Cheers. I love it. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks, thanks Jason. So here are the songs again. We're going to flip them around this time. We're going to start with Adam's Dirty Robots. I'm a dirty robot, please would you clean me? I don't like down with a lovely oily red There's something stuck inside my special tube I wonder if you'd be so kind as to remove it I would like to do that to your port with my pen And yeah, there would be viruses with my pen and With dirty robots, with dirty robots We've come from the past in search of models with slots. Our discs are all floppy, it makes us quite stroppy. Because we're incompatible when we get the hots. Now it's all wireless, there's the connection. It's nice to just be scancy even if you get some knots. Sapnav likes me, she's seen my modem hanging out. That's right, babe, it's enormous, and it does the job, well, just about. Here, let's get connected. There we go. Now you can send me dirty pictures, very, very slow. Now where's your lovely hard drive box? Have you got a slot for me? Hey, what's the problem? Why'd you kick me in the USB? We're dirty robots, we're dirty robots. We wish to connect with other machines with slots. We're not that picky, but we're finding it tricky. 
Cause no one seems to want to and we thought they'd be lost So we're sticking our cables wherever we're able Which sometimes can result in some extremely nasty shocks Dirty robots Dirty robots. There you go. You get the picture. That's song number one, Dirty Robots, uh, composed by Adam Buxton, who's here live in the studio with us. Hello, Adam. Hi, how you doing? What, what were your thoughts behind that None. song? None. Great. And here's the second song. This is recorded by Mijo Cornish, and it's called Sexy... D no, it's called Dr. Sexy. This doctor's ready to see you if you'd like to go through. My name is Dr. Sexy, I got just what you need, but I ain't got no medical degree. Know what I mean? I diagnose that you have sexy disease. The symptoms include hotness and the wearing of tight jeans. Would you pop this in your mouth? Don't worry, it's clean. It's just a thermometer. Oh my god, no, she's hotter than anyone I've ever seen. Yes, Tortillas, is your diagnosis the same as mine? Yes, Dr. Sexy, it's outrageous. And I think she's so hot, it's contagious. I can't fake it, I can't take it. And I'm feeling the urge to get naked. What kind of talk's inappropriate, Nurse Tortillas? What kind of doctor surgery do you think this is? Sexy, sexy doctor. Dr. Sexy. Oh, yes. I nearly forgot. My name is Dr. Sexy, but I'm not NHS. This is a private practice, now pop off your vest. Can I try an experimental technique I learned in Japan? They call me Dr. Sexy, and I sterilized my tools. Let's break some British Medical Association rules. Dr. Sexy, you'll be struck off for that. Sounds good. Oh, that's the end of Dr. Sexy. Yeah, that's Dr. Sexy. So there we go. S uh, send your vote by email. We're not allowed to accept votes by text anymore because uh, of special Newcastle rules. So email your vote to Adam and Joe, all one word, dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk. And just to remind you, because some people get a bit confused about who's who and what's what, um, uh, your song, which is uh, Dirty Robots. Adam Buxton, Dirty Robots. Uh, and Dr. Sexy, Joe Cornish. Not that we care. The main, it's just the joy of, of making the music. Yeah, exactly. It's all about the music. Speaking of which, here's, uh, the last of my choices for you listeners this week. Uh, this is The Cure, and, uh, it's from the album 17 Seconds, which is really, you know, even Actually, by their standards. Sorry, can I just say I, d I do care? Quite depressing. What? You who, care about who, what? Who wins? Oh, yes, yes. I do care. That was a lie. I was trying to sound noble, but actually, uh, we care. We do care. And viciously. You've got it in the bag this I, week. Just because I was lying earlier, and it's the big British castle, and we're not allowed to lie. Can't lie. Uh, I care a lot. There's no lying. I have to win. Care okay, much too much. Otherwise, it's going to be miserable. Well, uh, you've taken a defeat the last <laughs> few weeks, haven't you? Yes. No, it's definitely going to been a bad period for me. A dark period. It's in the bag for Doctor Sex. Do you think? Yeah. Definitely. You just want the opposite to happen. Definitely. <laughs> then, well, I'm, it's not. I'm not trying to like psych you out. I think it's maybe the better song this week. Maybe, Who but uh, the listeners will decide. You know, and they mm. might be grooving to the Dirty Robots all week. Every and... vote counts. Exactly. Uh, so yes, this is uh, called "In Your House" by The Cure. Hope you enjoy this one. That's The Cure with "In Your House." That's hip hypnotic, man. I love that song. That's a brilliant album as well. Seventeen seconds. Thanks. I, I remember as well that uh, when we were at school, we were at school with a guy called uh, Mark Myers, as he was then later known as Mark Keds of a band called The Senseless Things who were around in the early 90s and The Senseless Things actually formed while we were at school different members of course but our friend Patrick was in The Senseless Things for a while he played bass and um Mark Myers came in one day with this new song that he'd written called In Your Room and basically it was a total rip of that song uh, by The Cure in In Your House but uh, it's a good song to rip off, though. It's so deceptively simple. And my friend Patrick, he hadn't heard that song. And he said, oh, yeah, l listen to this song that Mark just played. It's really wicked, yeah. Ding, 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 <laughs> ding, 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 ding. It's like, have you heard uh, 17 Seconds by The Cure? You should listen to this track. It's very similar. 
and there was a little uh, uh, eruption, eruption there. That's how a lot of bands still operate. In the senseless things. That's true, yeah. I'm hey. not suggesting that Mark thereafter stole other people's no, songs. No, 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 no. no, no. no. Uh, this has been Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Thanks very much for listening. Thanks to everyone who's texted and also uh, communicated by email. Don't forget this show is available in its entirety on Listen Again all week and in podcast form with all the uh, most of the rubbishy bits taken out and the best rubbishy bits left in. It'll be up there from about six on Sunday. Yes, have a good week, take care, and we'll be with you again next Saturday morning from 9 till 12 here on BBC Six Music. Stay tuned for Liz Kershaw. Goodbye. Goodbye.